Hello and welcome to The Imaging Wire Show. My name is Brian Casey and I'm Managing Editor of The Imaging Wire. We've got a great episode for you today. Our topic is what can we do about physician burnout? And our guest is Dr. Sonia Gupta, Chief Medical Officer at Change Healthcare. She is a practicing abdominal radiologist who is passionate about mentorship and AI in healthcare. Dr. Gupta, thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Brian, for having me. So burnout is a, a really serious problem in healthcare and also in, in radiology. Uh, are, how familiar are you with the problem? And you know, we, we, we hear all these numbers about how bad it is. Um, is it really as serious as we've, we've heard? Yeah, I think unfortunately it is pretty serious. And you know, we do hear a lot of numbers and I think that kind of desensitizes us to the problem. But I know personally, uh, you know, I'm former academic faculty and I still mentor some medical students and radiology residents and radiology fellows. And, you know, many of them have graduated, they've started their first job. And I think what's been really surprising to me is many of them, you know, they've only been working, I would say less than three years and they're really feeling that burnout. And, you know, they reach out to me and they ask me for advice. Like, what do you think I should do? You know, I'm not feeling great about where I am. And, you know, many of them have actually switched jobs a few times, just you know, I mean, after one year, they've already had to switch roles, trying to find a better fit. And I think that really says something about the environment that they're working in, you know, that they're kind of trying to find that right fit and hoping for better. And, you know, unfortunately, sometimes it isn't better. So that's really been a challenge and trying to coach them through that. Yeah. Now, the the problem is 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 pretty prevalent. And there was a, um, there was a Medscape uh, study that came out I uh, believe uh, they, they track uh, burnout uh, every year, and th- their most recent one came out in, uh, I believe it was January of 2023, and they found that 53% of physicians said they were burned out, and uh, 23% said they were depressed. And then um, if you look at what the number is in radiology, uh, so they, they've also broke it down by uh, specialty. So you see emergency medicine way up there at the top, 65%. Um, but radiology is like number 11 at, at, at 54%. So it's at the higher end of, of specialties that are reporting burnout. Do these numbers kind of look like they're accurate to you? I think they do. I mean, I hear about it from colleagues and other specialties as well. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's really challenging. I think it just says more and more about the environment that they're working in, um, you know, not feeling... You know, some people use the term moral injury as well, because obviously you went to medical school to take care of patients and you want to take care of them. You know, you want to help them. But it feels sometimes that you're working against a system that is not allowing you to provide the best patient care. And that's what causes some of these challenges and some of that burnout and possibly even the depression. Yeah. Uh, And and I guess there was a study that came out in uh, AJR uh, a a few weeks ago about moral, they called it moral distress in radiology. And and they defined it as when you want to do, when you're working in an organization and you want to do the right thing, but you feel like uh, you can't due to all the different pressures that, that are there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you want to feel like you're doing the best you can for each patient that you're taking care of. And so then if you feel that, you can't, you know, that definitely adds up throughout the day. Because again, imagine our physicians are taking care of many, many patients per day, every day on weekends and on evenings. And, you know, that just builds up over time. Yeah. Now, when you talk to radiologists and and you're a practicing radiologist, when you talk to radiologists, what are some of the things that you're hearing that are causing them to feel burnout? You know, our imaging volumes have really gone up over the last several years, and that's a challenge because you're really being asked to do more with less. You know, as we have this burnout and some radiologists are actually just leaving the field of radiology or they're potentially going part time, you know, we have less radiologists to staff each shift. And so as our imaging volumes are going up, we have less radiologists available to read those cases and our imaging complexity has also gone up over the last several years. You know, CT scanners and MRI scanners continue to advance 
and there's thousands and thousands of images with each exam. And, you know, patients also have multiple prior imaging exams that you want to have available to you to use for comparison and to give a more accurate, complete patient care history, you know, when you're dictating your report. And so just navigating that system, you, you know, all the clicks and as patients move from one site to another, sometimes those images are not always available, you know, so there's a lag time there as well. And so all of those pressures building up uh, as well as turnaround times, you know, there's nothing more stressful than knowing that the ER is waiting for the results of your read uh, or a surgeon, you know, or a trauma team is waiting for the results of your read in order to make a patient care decision. And, you know, you're really, you could potentially be the bottleneck in them deciding something critical for that patient. So all of those stressors together, you know, as the volume just continuously increases. And the, the problem potentially could get worse because we've been hearing what's being called the great retirement coming up of a lot of uh, older radiologists deciding to retire. And that's going to make this problem of, uh, you know, the number of radiologists uh, compared to the the volume, like even worse. Absolutely. Uh, you know, our aging population is increasing and the ratio of the number of radiologists that are coming out into practice has not kept up with that uh, by any means. And, you know, when we do add in the retirements, you know, we do have the staffing shortages that we're not really seeing any solutions for at this point or any relief because it does take 10 years to train a radiologist. And, in addition to that, if we have radiologists like some, again, some of my mentees that are considering leaving the field of radiology, but they've only been practicing for anywhere from three to five years, you know, that's really discouraging as well, because it's going to be another 10 years before we're able to replace that radiologist. And this is not something that's unique to the United States. Uh, we are seeing this, you know, in the NHS, in the UK, there's also radiology staffing shortages in Ireland. And, um, you know, in other parts of the world as well. So that's the bad news. And we don't want to, we don't want <laughs> to bump people out too much by just dwelling <laughs> on the bad part. But um, fortunately, there are a lot of potential solutions to solving the burnout issue. A lot of them are rooted in uh, IT and then also in AI. So let's, let's talk about that a little bit. Um, what role do you think technology can play as a solution to burnout? Yeah, absolutely. I would love to talk about solutions <laughs> to actually address some of these problems. You know, I think that as radiologists have been figuring out what works the best for them with potential flexibility with, you know, where they read from and geographically and, you know, what shifts they're reading, using cloud technology helps with that because they should be able to log in from, you know, anywhere at any time to be able to hop on a list. And, you know, every person's family situation and home environment is different and their commuting abilities are different. So being able to use technology to allow them to be able to work when they can, you know, in hours that are the best for them with cloud technology, which allows for faster reading, faster streaming of images, um, those types of tools can really help with that. And, you know, I alluded to earlier over the pandemic, there was a lot of geographic shifting around of our patients and also our radiologists. And so being able to use IT tools that allow patients to, you know, bring their images from one institution to another is good for the patients and for their care, but it's also really good for the physicians and radiologists that are trying to take care of them because we do need that historical image to do the best that we can for them and to make a diagnosis. And, you know, if we're able to use these tools in an effective way, ideally we would start to see less burnout and more efficiency. And, you know, that is really the ultimate goal that we're looking for. Yeah. Now, one of the things that happened during the the, the COVID pandemic uh, was that uh, radiology got distributed, you know, really quickly where they said, you know, don't come into the hospital, you know, read at home. And, um, and radiology, you know, pivoted really quickly to enable to the work at home for radiologists. And obviously radiologists are, are kind of well, uh, well positioned to do that. Has that trend continued where employers are allowing radiologists to continue to read from home in cases where maybe they, they hadn't before? Or are they reverting to kind of like a, hey, you got to come back into the, the hospital model? 
Absolutely. There are more and more practices offering hybrid uh, positions, you know, where they're able to go into the hospital one or two days a week and then also work uh, from home a few days a week. Or potentially, you know, they work on site the entire week, but then if they take a call shift that's, you know, evenings or weekends, they're able to do that from home. And so that really obviously saves a lot of time with commuting. And for some of them, it has increased job satisfaction. Now, pre-COVID, most of our remote radiologists worked overnight shifts. And, you know, it really wasn't a trend to do a daytime shift and do it remotely. But over the pandemic, we've seen and as you said, at the start of the pandemic, we were one of the first medical specialties to make that rapid shift to home work. So we were working daytime shifts and we were doing those from home. And that trend has certainly continued with a lot of hybrid offerings as more and more radiologists are trying to balance. And I think it's a good trend for us because you know we've seen the numbers today about how prevalent burnout is with our specialty. So anything we can do to address that or alleviate that in some way and if remote work is part of that, then that's a great solution. So do, do you think that'll have an impact? You know, radiologists being able to, you know, just sort of naturally work from home? Absolutely. I think, you know, even academic medical centers are embracing remote work in some capacity. And they're allowing for, you know, attendings to teach remotely potentially or get lectures remotely. And I think that will have an impact because not everybody actually lives close to the imaging site that they want to read for. And being able to eliminate that commute, even a few days a week, makes a huge difference. I mean, that's two more hours in a day that they could potentially actually be taking care of patients, you know, not spending time in the car driving. Yeah. Now, what, what about image sharing? So uh, we're, there, a lot of, of uh, companies are develop, developing tools to make it easier to share images, to ditch the disk. Um, are, are, is that something that you think will have a bit, an impact on, on physician burnout? Absolutely, because you know, going back to moral distress, again, you're trying to do the best care that you can for this patient, and then you find out that you know they may have had many prior scans at another institution, and then you have to find out if there's a CD somewhere, and you know, getting the images digitized, and all this time could relate to a uh, potential delay in care. And so that's what you want to avoid. And also, uh, when we do multidisciplinary tumor boards, you know, we've had really great results with using image sharing, uh, potentially remote or hybrid, because sometimes our oncologists are at a different uh, site. You know, they may be in a clinic, but they want to attend tumor board. You know, and our radiologist is in a reading room in a different part of the hospital. And so being able to share the images with uh, a large group for a multidisciplinary tumor board, which we had always done previously in person, you know, which of course had its own challenges, allows for greater flexibility and I think ultimately will improve patient care. Perfect. Now, um, the one thing that we really need to touch on is the concept of AI in radiology and and you have an interest uh, in, in AI and everybody is kind of looking at all these things like chat GPT that, that are promising to really have a big impact on radiology. What are some of the possibilities in terms of of applying AI to this challenge of growing workload and growing imaging volumes, and and you know, can we use AI to attack that problem and, and maybe have things like Chat GPT do some of the mundane tasks that will enable radiologists to to focus on more higher order uh, responsibilities? Yeah, there are a lot of mundane tasks, and you know, many radiologists have to spend time clicking and clicking through uh, an EMR to find out a history that's relevant, you know, for the patient they're taking care of, for example, a prior surgery. You know, a common one is you have patients that come in with uh, right upper or right lower quadrant pain, and, you know, we have to figure out if they have a gallbladder or an appendix sometimes, and you don't see any information about that uh, that's easily or readily available, you know, in the record that comes up when you're trying to read that exam. So, you know, there are AI-assisted patient history summaries, you know, that's workflow related. If you're able to just open an exam and see the relevant history right then and there, you know, no extra clicks, that's huge. And, you know, that would be using natural language processing. And again, with natural language processing, AI assisted reporting, uh, which can be used two ways. You know, there can be automatic uh, impression generation, or it could actually be follow-up findings. One tool that I've personally used, uh, which was really a game changer was it will read the text of my report, it'll read my impression, 
And then if there's anything in that report that requires a standardized follow-up, it will pop up, you know, an alert that says, do you want to put this in your report? And as we all know in radiology, uh, the recommendations for standardized follow-up do change every few years. And, you know, keeping up with the current literature is always a separate task. And then having to cut and paste that recommendation into a report is another task. So if we're able to eliminate that, you know, by a workflow tool that uses NLP, again, that's huge. You know, it helps with burnout and is also a huge time saving. And then there's also uh, AI assisted exam triage, you know, prioritizing urgent cases, deprioritizing normal cases that can have its own benefits in terms of the stress. You know, when you have this endless list that you're scrolling through that you have to get through to just know that there's a little bit of a safeguard there you know, that urgent cases are going to be popping up to the top. And just knowing that can be, you know, alleviating a lot of that stress. Great. Uh, any other technologies that, you know, AI or non-AI that that we might be able to leverage to alleviate burnout, things like digital teaching files, that kind of thing? Yeah, digital teaching files, you know, are a good one. Uh, it's surprising, I think, to most people that, you know, this isn't automatically done for us. But, you know, we have to manually create digital teaching files and save cases that can be used for resident and medical student teaching. And now, you know, there are more and more tools out there that make it a lot easier to just click save and write a note. And it'll automatically put it in a folder that can then be used for teaching later on. And that is very important because we can't use some of the older methods that we used previously because more and more of our residents and medical students are not using textbooks anymore more and more of that information is online. And again, as the CT scanner and MRI and ultrasound technology continues to change, continuously you need new teaching files. You know, it's not, you just make one and you're done. Uh, and our academic faculty know this. So to be able to have tools that assist with that is huge. Great. So um, as we draw things to a close, I, I think that um, all, all these IT tools, IT tools are great, but people are st still have to go to work every day. And if... Um, you know, as we wait for these things to come online, what are some things that that you would recommend for a radiologist if they're feeling burned out or if they're feeling moral distress? What are some things that that people can do like right now without waiting for AI generated, you know, uh, reports and things like that? What are the things that they can do right now to maybe allevi alleviate some of that feeling of burnout that they're experiencing? Absolutely. That's a great question because, you know, a lot of what we're talking about is future technology. And, you know, even now, I think a third of radiologists are using AI in some capacity, but to just provide a solution that someone could consider tomorrow, I think is really important. So some of this is going to have to come at the practice leadership level. You know, there has to be an acknowledgement of non-RVU related work. You know, more and more practices I've been speaking with are acknowledging if you spend hours preparing for a tour board, you know, that needs to be acknowledged, appreciated, because you're somebody has to do this work. And, you know, it shouldn't be something that causes burnout because, you know, now let's say you spent hours preparing for this tumor board, but you got behind on your list. And, you know, people are looking at you negatively for that. And so acknowledging the non-RVU work that your colleagues are doing, you know, making the schedule, handling tumor board, answering phone calls from both patients and other physicians, protocoling exams, you know, that kind of acknowledgement, giving credit for that work and, you know, by setting RVUs is absolutely huge uh, so that people don't feel that they're doing kind of thankless work because it's really important work that has to get done. And then I would say, you know, a little bit of self-reflection. If you are feeling burnt out, is it because of the hours of your shifts potentially? Is it because you are on site and you want more remote work? Or is it the other way around? Maybe you're doing remote work and you feel isolated and you would like a few more days on site. So I think some reflection about different options and what could make you feel better in your current practice, you know, can help a lot. And then talking to your colleagues for support, like what's working, what's not working. And finally, I think this is the most important piece is leadership recognizing an emphasis on retention. You know, retaining your current staff is the best thing you can do. I think we know that there have been figures quoted between two hundred and fifty to five hundred thousand dollars as a cost of replacing a radiologist who leaves. So, if you are sensing that any of your colleagues are burnt out or need help, you know, or maybe they need a more flexible schedule, working with them to figure that out is much better than having to later on, um, you know, replace them. 
Definitely. I, I think that the the thing that seems to me that uh, is a positive trend is that administration is recognizing that burnout is a systemic problem. And it's not just, you know, having a 7 a.m., you know, pep meeting or, you know, yoga at noon or whatever. And it's something that is tied into uh, imaging volumes and the number of people on staff. And hopefully that will be, you know, if we combine recognition at the other le- at the up- upper levels of administration with a lot of these IT solutions, hoping, hopefully we can get a handle on this burnout problem. Absolutely. Great. And- Dr. Gutta, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to say, and, you know, I think medical students realize that radiology is still a great field to go into. You know, we had one of the most competitive match years uh, this past year. And, uh, you know, it's great because it allows you to utilize technology to take care of patients. And I think that's really exciting uh, in the new world of chat GPT. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, radiology is the top top three most in-demand specialty among medical students for like the past three years. So um, people still want to do it. Absolutely. Great. Dr. Gupta, thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you, Brian. Signing off for the Imaging Wire, my name is Brian Casey.